tell us about, like, think about, like, what really puzzled me, Rita, that if you really think about um, what happened to GE, think about um, wh even what currently Boeing is going through, right? Even that is Alan Mulally's Boeing, right? And it was Jack Welch's GE, right? So what's your thought process with respect of, uh, with, re with respect of these organizations, you know, when the leader changes, you know, how that, you know, how that culture change, how, um, you know, why these organizations falter? So I think, um, let, I'll start with GE, right. because I think GE's a fascinating story. Right, yes. I mean, the subject of endless business school cases Absolutely. and the company that could do no wrong, right? Right, yeah, exactly. And GE is actually a very interesting inflection point example, because right. what happened to them in the mid-2010s right. was they basically made a huge bet on fossil fuels being the dominant yes, yes. form of right. how we're going to generate energy. And at that time, if you've been paying attention, there right. were already pretty strong signals this wasn't going to continue. So we had the Paris Climate Accords. Mm -hmm. We had drastically re dropping prices of renewable uh, fuels. And even though GE technically was positioned well with respect to renewables, uh, they made a couple of big acquisitions for which some people say that they overpaid, uh, betting on fossil fuels. And now GE makes its money in the power business by basically servicing these large plants, which have 25-year lives. And what happened to their customers, as they, looked, they kind of looked around and they said, wait a minute, with all that's happening with renewables and so forth, we're not going to commit to those long-term contracts mm -hmm. until we know which way things are going. Mm -hmm. So the clients are holding off. GE's made all this investment in, in supporting this business model, which eventually turns out to be on the wrong end of an inflection point. And I think it's a very sad story. Um, Boeing is another great example of a company where the, the, the need to return benefits to shareholders was so significant that they made the decision not to invest in a new airframe to replace the 737 for a whole variety of reasons. But what they did do was they put these giant engines on a frame that was essentially lower to the ground than the competitive um, Airbus product. And then they tried to use software to sort of correct the, the situation. And then coupled with a whole number of other things, it's proved to be a very difficult and painful decision for them to have done that. Whereas perhaps if you'd started from scratch, you might have done it in a rather different way. Right. One of my observations also in, within the Boeing perspective, my feeling is I strongly feel that Boeing did not invest enough into the optimization of their product and processes, right? And, and I think because they're making, mon they're making money and doing well, right? So I think they lost that, in, in my viewpoint, is that the more Boeing should, should focus on everything what I read on the secondary data, my feeling is that they should much more focus on how to make the product robust, right? How to make the processes robust, right? So unless they literally go into the, you know, most of their engineers and managers has to be more knowledgeable on the optimization side. If they don't do the product optimization, these type of things can happen.